I'm Andrew Deneau, lead campaign designer, and today we're excited to introduce you to a big new feature in Company of Heroes 3, our dynamic campaign map. Company of Heroes has always been about taking command, making the right decisions, and forging your path to victory. The dynamic campaign map provides a new high-level strategic commander experience where you command the overall war effort in the region. On the map itself, you'll be managing combined land, air, and sea forces, securing supply lines, prioritizing key objectives, building up your intelligence network, and a whole lot more. This new campaign map layer will complement and influence the classic boots-on-the-ground RTS gameplay and make for a super replayable single-player experience. Companies and detachments are the main two unit types you will control on the map. You'll be using these units to perform all types of actions, from campaign map combat to capturing resources and objectives and cutting off enemy supply lines. Companies are a big piece of how you choose to command. All companies have their own unique unit roster, unlocks, and abilities. On the dynamic campaign map, a US airborne company will allow for aggressive strikes behind enemy lines and will grant access to elite paratrooper and powerful airborne abilities in mission. Companies are also how you engage with classic Company of Heroes missions and skirmishes. Detachments are smaller support units and can operate independently from companies on the dynamic campaign map. Detachments also confer unique effects on missions. For instance, if you have a British medical detachment nearby, you will gain the ability to call in a medical half-track in mission to reinforce and heal your troops. There are lots of other ways in which campaign map actions affect the classic Company of Heroes missions players know and love. For instance, if you have a US Naval Destroyer Squadron within range of your mission, you can call in Naval Gun Fire Support. However, that's only if you haven't used your US Naval Destroyer to recently soften up the enemy on the campaign map. What's more, if you bomb a mission space before starting, you'll see the results when you send in your troops. Also, your companies will gain veterancy. Veterancy will unlock more skills for your company and will also unlock officers, granting unique company traits on the campaign map. You'll have a bunch of other cool systems at your disposal. They're going to let you choose how you want to command and make for a really replayable experience. If you want to prioritize air superiority, you should focus on capturing airfields and focus on air force production. You'll still have choices to make here though. Do you want to prioritize recon planes, heavy bombers? Personally, I love C-47 squadrons as they allow for supply drops and airborne company drops behind enemy lines. Perhaps you'll prefer to focus on your relationships with partisan forces, increasing your intel networks and sabotage capabilities. Maybe you will occupy each and every territory, securing your supply lines along the way. Or perhaps you will risk behind-the-lines operations to quickly achieve key objectives. Will you favor elite special forces companies or formidable armored units? Will you employ a detachment heavy strategy or invest more in upgrades or naval power? Time to take command and find out.